This video is sponsored by Melina, who gave us the horse that made this run possible. Oh my god, I can't wait to start my first play through a Elden Ring. I just got called Maidenless, but that won't stop me. Ooh, maybe that guy over there can help me. Hello, sir. Do you by chance know where I can find some maidens? Bro, what the hell? Fuck this, I'll go find some myself. Hey, you remember this big guy? Of course you do. Whether you started off as a melee focus class or a spellcaster in your first playthrough. This dripped out brute and his equally dripped out horse waiting right outside the huh? tutorial area probably kick your teeth in first time round. You'd probably given it a few tries, miserably failed, before eventually giving up and deciding to come back later. No shame in it. Alongside the Deathbirds and the Crucible Knights, these warriors on horseback remain one of the more difficult and memorable mini bosses in Elden Ring. With three distinct variations, and each with their own respective twists and usable equipment scattered all throughout the lands between, I thought that would be pretty fun to see if I could beat this game cosplaying all three of this terrific trio. But also, since given an opportunity too good to pass up, I decided that I'd stack it up with another challenge run idea I've had for a while now, and that being horse only. If you're wondering what that means, well, let me just show you. This was made possible using the Torrent Anywhere mod that allowed me to use Torrent even in restricted areas such as Legacy Dungeons. Links in the description. Here are the rules. 1. The run officially starts after I received the horse whistle and have acquired at least one tree sentinel weapon. 2. I am only allowed to access the weapons, the armors, and the spells of the regular tree sentinel, the draconic tree sentinel, and the retta. But unlike my crucible night run, I will not be able to mix and match my equipment. 3. While being dismounted, I will not be able to attack, roll, or traverse large distances. 4. Under certain conditions, I will be allowed to move around on my own. This includes interacting with objects, climbing essential ladders, and traversing essential places the mod creator forgot to allow the use of horses for, most commonly being elevators. And yeah, let's finally get into the run. First off, I chose Confessor as my starting class, as it came with a good mix of strength and faith, much needed for our purposes. I then named myself after the guy who suggested this run in my Crucible Night video, spent a few minutes making a beautiful boy, cause screw you, I'm not making a humunculus, and we start the run. After dying on my Whee! own terms, I remember the rules of my run and immediately take off all my clothes. And since there's no Tree Sentinel armor sets lying around anywhere early game, we'll be running around naked for a while. I punch Vary for good luck run past my soon-to-be victim and explain the rules of the run to chat as soon as we receive torrent we just instantly become a cripple just imagine that i then met up with my sponsor and received the most important item of this run the spectral steed whistle torrent has chosen you i didn't choose the horse the horse chose me i then asked chat okay so what do you guys want to see me do first do you guys want to see me like fight the tree sentinel at the beginning to get his golden halberd at the very beginning do you guys want to see me like farm for items? To which they obviously chose the less boring option. Oh god. Yo, I'm not sure if fighting was a good idea, dude. Yo, is one actually OP? What? Yep, this is... I found the optimal strategy, guys. Oh god. No, 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 no. You ain't touching me with that. That is a one shot. A shield should not be stronger than a, than a freaking spear, dude. That is not how uh, reality works. Well, at the same time, I have a double jumping goat horse. But, you know. Damn it! <laughs> First try. First try. Easy peasy, boss. God damn it. With this, I received the golden halberd, and now the run can finally begin. But since I can't exactly use this weapon yet, I then headed towards Fort Gale to go get the Star Scourge heirloom that boosts strength by 5. However... Wait, what? Yeah, unfortunately the mod creator forgot to allow the usage of torrent for some of the more obscure areas. I don't blame him though. 
I wouldn't remember these either. Though sadly, this would continue to happen what? a bit throughout the playthrough. What? So with that, since it wasn't required to beat the game, I bailed and instead decided to set my sights on Fort Faroth. Put a Radagon Sorcio. But again, God damn it. Okay, okay, you know what? Imagine I get this first try. What? Oh! Oh my god! Once again, Carl saves the day. Now with all the runes Carl left for us, we level our strength to 20 over the 30 minimum requirement. Because somehow, if you two-hand before riding the horse, the two-handed growth still applies. With this, I then carry my remaining runes across Limrave all the way to Liernia to go meet up with my boy EG for an easy early plus 4 halberd. Before spending the next 30 minutes running around getting all the golden seeds and sacred tears. Got the faith not cracked here for some added faith scaling. Got the strength not cracked here for added strength scaling. And finally, got the Lance Talisman that boosts the attack on a horseback by a staggering 15%. Thank you, Miyazaki. Anyway, now with all that prep work done, so it's finally time to challenge the first boss of this run. Let it be Margit the Fell. Okay, I am so confused. <laughs> I think I was recording, but I actually... Oh god! Oh no! Jeez. Oh yeah, that's some thick damage. Margit ain't doing shite. What's up, Margit? What are you gonna do, huh? Too bad. Yo, this, 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 yo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my god. Bro, who needs dodges? Dude, who needs dodges? What the frick? I'm over leveled. You dead. With this, I think it's safe to say that Margit was now Margit lost. And now with the new talisman slot, I quickly go get the Hex Talisman, which boosts my charge attacks by 10% before returning to the gates of Stormvale. The gates. Open the bloody gates. Ah, uh, I'm scared. I am scared. I have no dodges. Oh! Yeah, despite what I initially thought, trying to use the main gate was a much larger threat than I'd ever thought it would be. So after a few minutes of pointless struggling, I eventually just took the L and used the side path instead. That okay, 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 but are you uh, this smart? Guard, you know, you see that guard attack talisman over there? Yeah, we're not getting that. Ow! After this, besides when climbing ladders, with the help of Torin's blistering speed, I proceed to absolutely zoom through Stormvale, jumping from rooftop to rooftop, as well as avoiding enemies like they weren't even there. And not long after, I soon arrived at Godric's doorstep. Let's see if he's gonna be a challenge. Oh god. This actually might be harder than Margaret. There's long reaching sweeps. Gee! I wanna try a heavy attack, but I don't know like the I don't know the pattern. Oh, cool. Three hits, easy hits. There we go. Maybe I shouldn't have upgraded the plus four. Maybe. Oh, oh. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Godric didn't really pose that much of a threat either. Besides that one attack where he aimed for my horse first and left me vulnerable. Wouldn't be the last time this will happen by the way. <coughs> Godric goes down. Second try. Look at my face. Do you see how much I care? No, I don't care.
Next off, seeking a challenge, I immediately head towards Raya Lucaria. Racing through the academy, I realize why the devs prohibit the use of Torrent in Legacy Dungeons before meeting the dog who put all his runes into Int and forgot to level Vigor. Safe to say, I absolutely demolished this family pet. The damage I did was way too high. Doggo couldn't reach me, and the spells it cast just flew right past me. With all of this and some good RNG to top it all off, this fight lasted about only 30 seconds. That's not sweet pup. After that, I then taught Torrent how to obey traffic laws, attempted to challenge Moongrum, Severely underestimated him before watching him oh, fall to his God, demise. No. Ha! <laughs> now, with all that said, it was now time to challenge Snow White and the malformed children. No. No sleeping type. You die. Oh, 900, Jesus Christ. I am so over level, Jesus. Okay, please, please, please tell me I can kill it. Please, one more. Let's go! Oh my god. Yeah, this is a really long ass freaking cutscene, dude. So I just went to go piss, drink water, sleep, and then I came back. Oh, 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 um, <laughs> what? You might be wondering, what the hell just happened? My guess is that when phase two begins, the game only expects the player model to spawn in. You know, without the horse. I think Torrent's legs spawn slightly below the standing platform, causing me to fall through the world. I don't know. Luckily though, during my very next attempt, I found out that this problem could easily be fixed by just dismounting the horse before second phase begins. Summoning Torrent again once we've been spawned in. Okay, cool. Oh, I missed. That sucks. No, <laughs> you can't run away from me. Uh. Okay, okay. Ignoring these two very unfortunate events. Firstly, phase 1 was a non-issue. I let the kids have a taste of pure gold, and due to my insane early game damage, I would almost always one cycle Renala. For the second phase however, somehow the common azure that she would always use the start of the fight became a slight issue. I say slight because you can easily dodge it by pressing the sprint button at the right moment. But boy was it nerve wracking. Anyway, once again, Renala's weakness was the act of moving in a circular motion. Besides common, this strategy practically countered everything she threw at me. This was my general attack pattern, and using my currently overpowered halberd, Renala goes down without summoning even once. After this, I then decided to pay a visit to Karya Manor and... Oh, well I guess I won't be doing Rani's questline anytime soon. With this, I then set my sights on Altus. But since we couldn't get access to the Dectus lift, we'll have to get there the old-fashioned way. Setting up these mines, I find myself being harassed by a group of bats, and sadly, more than once. So unfortunately, due to this reason, I single-handedly became the main reason why the bat species of Northern Leonia is now currently in danger. Anyways, after getting to the top, I met up with your boy Magma and Makar who promptly welcomed me with the force equivalent of a truck going down the highway. Now that wasn't very nice. So to return the favor, I went back, lightly tapped his leg, gave him a few boops to the snoot, one more for his other leg, and now he was roadkill. With this, we reach Altus, the land of gold and the birthplace of the tree senti. Here we casually ignore the ancient dragon, say hello to my brethren, get some more flask essentials, and confront it my stalker. Die! My next course of action was to approach the Falling Star Beast located right outside the castle walls, and physically assault him until he dropped me to Somberstone 5. Sadly though, after feeling the specky tail of the beast against my silky smooth skin a few too many times, I thought to myself, Man, I need myself some armor. So with that, I met up with everyone's favorite Patches, lead actor of famous movie Multiverse of Patches, who 
before realizing I forgot to get my second talisman pouch and purchasing the market shackle. Alright, cool. Next, I head towards the Orisa Heroes Graven Altars, to where my first instance of drip was located. There, I avoided the stone chariot, dropped down this hole, confronted my past trauma, and... How does this work? Like... A boom. What? 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 Whoa! 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 What? Holy shit! Never patch this. Never patch this. Damn, I look good. Though I didn't have the stats to properly even fat roll while wearing this armor, let alone equipping the weapon to go with it. Fortunately, this did not matter in the slightest. Since our equip load does not affect Torn in any visible way, at least from what I can tell, we are free to wear whatever we choose, without any downsides whatsoever. The only downside I could think of is probably losing the ability to roll out after being knocked down. But since we can't roll anyway, this doesn't change anything. Anyway, now with the power of Drip by my side, I then go challenge the beast once more and finally... Wait a minute, wrong footage. There we go. After this, I then did a few other minor things, such as defeat the demi-human queen in the Lux Ruins for the Ritual Sword Talisman, and thereafter challenging the Tree Sentinel duo just to assert my dominance. TLDR, my strategy was to bait out one Sentinel at a time and take them down one by one, though I'd had to defeat both of them consecutively without dying. Due to my Hotblade's reach and damage output, as well as my experience with Tree Sentinels in general, the duo goes down with ease. Also, for those who are wondering, although the rules do technically allow me to use the Tree Sentry Shield and even the Sentry Torch, sadly, for obvious reasons, I will not be using either of these for this run. Anyways, after this, I then make my way towards Redmain Castle, have Papa Gale read me a bedtime story, and now it's time to challenge Mr. Big Bad Gravity Thruster Stumps on the tiny horse himself, the Star Scourge. Now, unlike some of you watching this, even though the fight does permit the use of Torrent even in base game, up until this point, I personally have never fought this boss force only, so for me, this was a pretty exciting new experience. That being said though, I still do have a few tips that I could give. 1. Upon entering the arena, immediately start running really far back. Doing so will cause you to slip past Radon's aggro range and in turn triggering your boy's AI to start pulling out his swords and immediately start pursuing you instantly skipping his bow phase. 2. Since the boss was designed with horse combat in mind, look out for his longer attack strings, as more often than not, these will usually leave him vulnerable for quite a bit. Use these moments to punish accordingly. And with those two main points out of the way, let me just regurgitate everything else. Is he buffing his swords with crack blade? Run to the back and capitalize. Grab these spheres? Strafe to the side. Ground shock waves? Double jump. Phase transition? Uh, try not to engage with a falling star scourge? See him lifting up meatballs? Sink in as much damage as possible. This is huge. 4 followed by X stance. Sprint to the side, then jump the shockwave. And finally, for this drill attack, sprint to the side for the first attack, then sprint directly backwards for the follow up. Put them all together, and the Star Scourge falls. But this time, not from the stratosphere. After this, I then made my way to the giant crater Radon left behind, wondering how it ended up like this and not like. Wednesday poster is sus. Though the mimic tier once again steals my fit and somehow manages to hit roll in it, the boy forgot one crucial detail: the horse. With its AI not knowing how to comprehend the absolute overload of information that is the mighty Equus Calibus. The boy's brain practically just shut down as he took every single tank we threw at him. Oh yeah. Preparing for the fight to come, I then found myself a good place to stock up on Golden Roar to feed Torrent with. Cause if you didn't know, 
Torrent actually has a separate health bar from the player character, meaning Torrent can actually be killed, causing you to go through the painfully long dismount animation and forcing you to waste a perfectly good red flask right after, assuming you survived. Well, I don't want to do that, so yeah. After gathering materials for a bit and crafting them into the consumable sweet raisin, I, for whatever reason, decided to go beat up Jokhan. But, uh, let's get back to that later. For pacing purposes. <sighs> Alright, let's do this. After this, I then completely ignored the deep root depths and took the very next stop, arriving at the Antile River. Here, I tanked the local Space Scorpion's meteor shower, ran past a colony of fire ants before arriving in the eternal city of Noxtella, where I gathered many of the materials necessary to upgrade the rest of the weapons I will be using this run. After that was done, I then made my way down to the Lake of Rot, and to my amusement, this happened. Yeah, let's go! No rot. Let's go. Having suffered traversing the horrible crimson body of water throughout practically all of my other playthroughs, having not to deal with the rot at all, honestly felt really refreshing. So with that, I then retrieved the rest of my materials needed and beat up this unsuspecting dragonkin soldier just for the funsies, before finally challenging everyone's favorite celestial anal bead. Now I'll be completely honest, this fight was pretty easy. I don't know if it was just me, but it felt like all you had to do was do a few laps around his noggin and eventually you'll crack his skull. The meteor shower was a bit scary, and sometimes he would even dodge my attacks. But I don't know, it just felt sort of natural. Maybe this was because this fight actually might have been designed with force combat in mind. Okay, hear me out. So basically, Estelle actually has this unused meteorite attack, very similar to Radon's. This means that at one point, Radon's arena was in fact originally meant for Estelle. And what do you do with an arena of that scale? You need a horse. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. It was around this point where I was starting to think that this run would actually turn out to be easy. None of the bosses so far had proven to be any sort of challenge whatsoever. And because of that, I was quite on the high horse. But little did I know, this was just a calm before the storm. Okay, let's rewind a bit. Back to when we were fighting your boy Draconic. Since this was yet another fight that can normally be done on horseback, the odds seemed to be stacked in my favor. 
Pair that up with my quite potent damage output and experience with the Sentinels in general, Draconic was in for quite the rough time. So with that, due to the boss's slow moveset and recovery speed, I practically punished every single opening that was presented to me, ultimately resulting in your boy's swift and effortless defeat. Don't worry bud, you'll always be my favorite tree sentinel. So yeah, with that out of the way, it is now time to see what challenges the capital has to offer. But before that... Considering that the two bosses moving forward are quite resistant to holy damage, as well as for the sake of variety, I then decided that now was the time to use another weapon for a change, as I pulled out my newly upgraded Dragon's Great Claw. Now as per the rules of this run, I was once again reduced to nothing but my undies, and since the Draconic set couldn't be obtained all the way up until Pharaoh Missoula, this is what I had to work with. And with that, we arrived to challenge the mighty Piss Ghost. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Alright, alright. Starting off the fight, I then soon realized that unlike the Golden Halberd, the Great Claw on the other hand had a much slower and heavy moveset. And with this, I found myself actively having to time and even angle my hits in order to just properly damage the boss, which in turn also locked Torrent out of doing certain animations such as jumping or sprinting. And while trying to get the hang of it, I died a few times, mainly due to being knocked off the horse by Godfrey's heavy poise damage, but most notably, this double slash attack. Luckily though, after a few attempts, I finally managed to figure out how this oversized kneecap on a stick actually worked. And using my knowledge gained from finding this boss many times over, deduced the most effective way of approaching this fight, namely the art of circling. If you've seen videos of people pulling out moves like this, or have even done it yourself, you'll know that the first Elden Lord's Kryptonite is simply just strafing to the side. And so with that, I then proceed to beat the piss out of Godfrey, and now the only thing left was Ghost. After this, literally two minutes later, we then arrive at yet another fog wall, ready to challenge our very next boss, Morgoth. But as I like to call him, the cloak only wearing exhibitionist ass, acrobatic ass, smurf ass, try hard, simp king. Oh god, I spawned really close. Oh, uh. Ooh, I can dodge that. Let's go. Oh god. Oh, ow, ow, ow. <gasps> yeah, I'm not gonna lie, coming into this fight, I did not expect that Morgoth would go down easy. Far from it, actually. And wouldn't you know it, I was completely right. From Morgoth's blistering speeds and devastating combos to his incredibly varied moveset, this guy was a force to be reckoned with. And what do I have? This incredibly slow and oversized ball stick. Not to mention the fact that me calling him an exhibitionist earlier was ironic as fuck. Like at least he got a cloak on. But unlike Morgoth's probably thick hide, I on the other hand had silky smooth baby skin with a durability equivalent to that of a wet paper towel. His swords would lock me in place. His hammers would knock me off my horse or otherwise deal the finishing blows. His daggers... Uh, his daggers were manageable. Oh, and if I wasn't careful, this guy can actually manage to catch up to me even given how fast Torrent is. But of all this, None compared to his dastardly conjured spear. Anything that had to do with this holy poking machine would be sure to give me a rough time. Whether it be the running charge or the poke, either could spell certain doom if dealt with poorly. But of all three, the throw was by far the worst one. Besides being able to hit me at range, the sheer damage and accuracy of this attack was straight up deadly. Capable of knocking me off my horse or just flat out kill me. Couple this up with how often he uses this attack, and this was no longer something that I could easily ignore. So in order to deal with this, at first I thought of trying to time my sprints so that the spear misses and flies right past me, as well as by running directly at the boss, circling him so that the tracking gets confused and again, miss me. At times, this was proven to be useful, but ultimately, these methods proved to be way too inconsistent to firmly rely on. So with that, I then turned to another interesting mechanic built into our double jumping furry fellow. Let me introduce you to the dismount animations. Now I'm pretty sure that every single one of you watching this are at least loosely familiar with what that is. But to get everyone up to speed, let me go over what exactly they do. The first of the two animations would be the casually gets off the horse animation or animation A. This can be triggered by pressing the crouch button 
or by using the spectral state whistle while mounted and standing in place. This provides the user with the benefit of iframes, but to the detriment of having to stay in place. Very similar to the mounting animation, which shares the same properties. The second animation will be called the Yoshi Jump, or Animation B. This one is triggered by activating the dismount input on the horse while still in motion, sending the player flying straight into the air and launching them forward. This is useful for when you need more of a burst of speed or when staying still isn't an option. Overall, a solid choice for avoiding lingering hitboxes, but with the major downside of having no iframes whatsoever. So yeah, I think that we can easily conclude that option B is the way to go. I mean, just using the jump, we can easily just... Okay, so apparently Morgoth can flick. Yeah, option A it is. So now with the main problem solved, all that's left to do is to take care of the rest. Oh no! Let's do this. For all the people spamming the comment section right about now saying, Oh, but Tree Sentinels aren't able to dismount, run invalid. Feel free to click off this video. Because I'm going to tell you right now that some of the later bosses, yeah, they just can't be done without them. Anyway, after this, I then approached the Earth Tree, ready to be crowned Elden Lord. When, guys, the tree is racist. So with this, I then made my way towards the Forbidden Lands. And while freezing my butt off, traversing the icy tundras of the lands between, me with my monkey brain thought to myself, if the next boss is Fire Giant, and the Fire Giant is a big boy, and big boy means big damage, and me is butt naked, meaning I take more damage because of it, that would mean... Alright, change of plans. Given that we're now at this point in the game, accessing the concentrated snowfield should be within reach. And from there, we make our way to the Halic Tree, where our next target and fresh new set of drip will be waiting. Now all we have to do is head on over to Castle Sol, say hello to Commander Nayal, and kindly ask him to... Oh, forgot about that. Um, how about I try this? Eh, worth the shot. Well, I guess we won't be getting there the normal way. Not to worry though, there's always a snowfield skit. Oh wait, that one's been patched. Um, what if I try to... Okay, I'm just getting desperate at this point. Give me a moment, hold on. Working snowfield skip patch 1.06. Aha, there we go. All right, Crazy Swain, take it away. So as you can see, I'm aiming for the bush. All I'm going to do is run forward, then sprint right after that small bush. I'm going to jump and aim all the way down. Look at the mountain and then jump left. If it does this camera view right here, you're good. But if it does the other... All right, then. Seems easy enough. Let's give this a try. Okay, this... 
this might take a bit of practice. A few moments later. After a bit of trial and error, I then managed to stick the landing, quit out and reload the game really quick. And after following the video's ultra specific instructions, finally made my way down and actually arrived at the snowfield. Anyway, after this, fearing that I'd have to do this all over again, I then made a dash straight for the closest side of Grace I knew of, that being the one in Ligma Town, which also happens to be the place I was just looking for. And with this, as I made my way towards the Evergold, I thought of how easy it would be to light all the candles this time around. As with Torn by my side, I can... Oh, come on! <sighs> Alright, guys, so, I'll be honest. I've got nothing. I've already had to deal with not having any stat boosting equipment early on being denied access to Ronnie's quest line, and even having to go through that incredibly tedious snowfield skip just to get here. So at this point, just let me have this, all right? We all good? All right, cool. Anyway, with this out of the way, we then arrived at the Halic Tree. And once again, with the help of our trusty steed, we absolutely ignored the entirety of this area within minutes. Like, I know I'm saying this again, but holy shit, I get why the developers don't want you using Torin in here. Now, we activate the shortcut, and let's see what Loretta has in store for us. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be rough. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, at first I was a bit intimidated, but eventually, on my very next attempt, I realized something. It's just Tree Sentinel. It's just a magic Tree Sentinel. Indeed it is past me. I realize that at her core, Loretta is literally just a tree sentinel, but with homing projectiles. This practically shifted my perception and made me approach this fight as if I was up against some sort of tree sentinel or tree avatar hybrid. And since these two just so happen to be one of the few bosses I've had the most experience with, mounted combat included, Loretta then proceeds to go down with ease, even despite the fact that I was incredibly underleveled. God damn. Okay, now I know what some of you are thinking right about now, but Chris Crass, isn't Loretta technically not a tree sentinel? And to that, here's my argument. But if that's not enough for you, then uh, you guys voted for it. So yeah, great. Now that that's been taken care of, I then reallocate my stats to better suit my new equipment. And since I was way too lazy to start farming for upgrade materials on stream, I then settled on the meteorite staff before finally deciding to go confront big boy. Alright you big redhead chest face dinner plate wielding fire barfing chonker. Taste the wrath of the spell I gambled my entire video's legitimacy on. Huh. Maybe it needs another angle. Alright, it's probably the staff. But since I still didn't feel like farming, me and Torrent then proceeded to spend the next 30 minutes being grinded into a fine paste by the fire giant. Lovely on toast and a treat the entire family can enjoy. Oh wait, they're all dead. Hmm. But anyway, after a while, I've decided that I've had enough, and with that, started slicing up the giant's left ankle, turning it into sashimi in return. In retaliation to this, he then tried to swap me away with what I could only assume to be his only source of shelter and or dinner plate. But me being the annoying fucking land insect that I am, maneuver my way around almost every attack. He also tried to step on me a few times, but joke's on him. I'm kinda into that. Maybe not Torrent though. Anyway. After a certain point, the giant sort of just said, fuck it. If I'm gonna lose my leg, I'll lose it on my own terms. And proceeds to commit self-mutilation. Yeah, dude, I don't think the insurance is gonna cover that. With this, I was then left with two options. Either take the damage penalty of attacking the rear, or risk it for the biscuit and head him face on. Now I gave the latter a few tries and yeah, I could not for the life of me figure out what the fuck was no. going on. So that left me with the other option. Grind away at the giant's ass. Wait a minute, that sounds wrong. And slowly whittle down his, well, giant HP bar. Now this is where I ran into the most problems. While I took my sweet time just trying to tickle the boss, the boss on the other hand was given all the time in the world to do the same. And let's just say he had a much easier time than I did. This got me thinking, how are you more dangerous as a cripple? Anyway, in the end, I think that this fight took way longer than it was ever supposed to be. This was probably due to my lower damage output, my only spell failing to be viable, me being unable to accept that I went through all that trouble just to end up with this super cool but useless spell. And everyone's favorite, greed.
with a touch of bad luck. But nonetheless, after half an hour of trying to turn the giant's rear end into minced meat, we finally succeed and can now move on with our lives. Well, at least I can. After this, I then ended the stream for the day, and after a bit of rest, the very next day, I then thought of doing something about my only spell's horrible damage output. And so with that, before I started my very next stream, I then decided to get myself a better staff. And since I'd want to maximize my damage per cast, I'd figured that getting Lusat's staff was the obvious choice. But what's that? I don't have enough intelligence to use the staff because I'm a big doo-doo head? Not to worry, since I'm already here, Mogwin's palace should be just within reach. You're kidding me. Alright, Vari, you're up. Start the montage. Gift for you. Something fit only for the wise. Hello there. Yes, sir. But you mustn't use it just yet. Got This music track was composed by a fellow member of my Discord server. Links in the description. Thanks a lot, Orca. Yeah, no problem. Alright then. Now that I've gotten myself a proper build, I thought I'd give this a little test drive. Alright, Mogster. It's Pedo versus Pancake. Have at thee. Maybe I'll come back later. With this, I then began to stream for the day. In continuing down the main path, Melna proceeded to cast Fire's Deadly Sin on herself? I don't know. I was so bored I fell asleep. Bruh. But anyway, I then awoke in Disneyland and wasted no time whatsoever as I made a dash for the theme park's main attraction, the infamous Foreskin Brothers, Scrotum and Shaft. Alright Spell, you've got one last chance. Don't fail me now. Alright, that's all I needed to see. I did all that farming for that? Also, 53 in for an extra 81 damage? See, scaling my ass, that's almost as much damage I got for Solaria's tree back in my Crucible Night run. So I have to deal with a shitty weapon as well now? Great. <sighs> now at this point, I had already got myself the Ancient Dragon Prayer Book. And as much as I'd like to just annihilate these two goofy goobers using the power of an actually good spell, I thought, I started this fight as Loretta, I'll finish this fight as Loretta. And so with that, due to my unrelenting gamer pride, I abandoned this garbage spell forever and then got to work. My first attempts went, well, as you expect. I went in blindly at first, trying to evenly chip away at both bosses simultaneously, lowering both of their HP bars at an equal rate, as the monkey inside of me thought, ah yes, symmetry good. Before soon after realizing that having two bosses being enraged at the same time was probably not a good idea. I then thought, hey, Fatty isn't exactly hard to miss, and Skinny tends to dodge. So why don't I just focus solely on Fatty? Seems like a completely reasonable and thought out plan, doesn't it? Yes, but actually no. At first things seemed to be going alright. This was because, frankly, Circling just so happened to be the natural enemy of poking attacks. And unfortunately for cholesterol over here, that happens to be our specialty. Now I'm not saying that this was easy. After all, I still had to juggle Danger Noodle over there, and try not to corner myself into some random pillar at the same time. But overall, I'd say it was at least getting somewhere. Well, until this happened. Like, how am I supposed to deal with that? Outrun it? Use iframes? 
And it's not like he uses it only once. Like, I also have to kill him multiple times. But amidst all this mental turmoil, I then realized something. Why don't I just bully his much less interesting edgy little brother? With this, I then decided to do a 180 and focus solely on Slinky instead. And I'm not gonna lie, at first I was admittedly quite bothered by having a third of my attacks being casually backflipped over every so often. But honestly, compared to what I had to deal with earlier, I'd say this was quite the bargain. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about actually killing this wet noodle. Step 1, never stop moving. For this fight, speed and positioning is key. As with Skinny being our main focus, we now have to deal with Chungus tailing us from behind. And if I know anything about not getting bullied by two bosses simultaneously, it's that staying still is probably the last thing you want to do. Also, conveniently, many attacks can actually be avoided by just circling. So there's that. Though, try to separate the two while you're at it. Step 2. Hit and run tactics. What you want to do is try to make the most out of Torrent's mobility by spending most of your time circling just out of reach of the boss. And while doing so, try to bait out as many suitable attack openings as possible and make sure to punish accordingly. And finally, step three, expect bullshit. Ow, oh no, what, 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 what? Even though earlier I did mention that many of their attacks could be easily avoided by just circling, that doesn't mean you should solely rely on it. Keep in mind, this is still that one infamous duo fight that's a hassle to deal with, even normally. So with a really long drawn out fight like this one, random bad things are bound to happen. Actually no. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. They will happen. So yeah, be patient, adapt, and again, expect bullshit. And with all that said, congratulations, you have successfully slain the Godskin Apostle. Gotcha, bitch. Alright, I expected that. But just curious, let's see how much of the fight we got left. Huh. Well, fortunately for me, I stockpiled on quite a few berries on my way here. So I hope you're hungry, Torrent, because this is going to be a long ride. Eventually. After tirelessly circling the boss for what felt like an eternity, I knew that in order to win, I'd have to kill the Apostle a total of five times without dying. And so with that, as I slowly swirled the skinny boy into his demise, I thought, man, Bleed would be so useful right about now. Like, come on, you're telling me a weapon that looks like this doesn't come with the funny red squirts? But anyway, after much hardship and perseverance, I finally got the strength and the luck necessary to finally take down this disastrous duo once and for all. Hit it.
you will never be anything more than just your brother's shadow. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't. Anyway, where was I again? All right. Get this shit off me! Ah! Wait. I just realized. Is that a mini dragon on my head? What the hell? Now, we kill this guy. Ask Turtle Pope to teach me a lesson. Have EG upgrade the Great Claw. Respect to a strength faith build. For runes. I've always wanted to try doing this. And hey, since I'm already here, why don't I just. Alright, Malekith. Now, knowing him, I assume we're gonna be here for a while. So, with that in mind, Let's just get this over with. I wonder if I can punish that. Ow! Well, I guess. Oh, no, you don't. You ain't pulling a fast one on me, you tricky bugger. Okay, Boulder can be outspaced. Heh, <laughs> can't touch this. Heh, <laughs> nice. An attack can also be outspaced. Okay, that was dumb. Ow, 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 Doran! Thank God for iframes. Huh. Second phase already. Not a bad start. Oh, 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 no! Plus one. Damn. Saved by the pillars. Dude, can you please stop spamming your ult? Dude, this is in DMC5. Can you please stop farming style points? There we go, and... Wait a minute. It's already over? Huh. First try, I guess. The all-knowing, huh? Well, let's put that to the test. Shut up, it's my turn to speak. Did you know that horses have a nearly 360 cone of vision? This means that even if Torrent has his back completely turned, he can still see me whooping your ass. Next fact, did you know that horses only have one less bone than humans? That being the only bone I got for you right now. Wait, 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 I mean, you know, the phrase, I've got a bone to pick with and of it. So I whipped my one and only shot at downing Gideon while he's most vulnerable. What's the worst that could happen? Okay, TLDR, swapped my fit real quick for wolfset reasons. Casually circle past the blue torpedoes and floating pokers. Skillfully avoided soul stream. And the golden rings can fuck off.
But either way, this fight took way longer than it ever should have. Hey, a man can dream, all right? Moving on. Now, at this point, you'd think I'd continue down the main path. You know, actually beat the game. But of course, I do nothing in order. And so with that, as I descend into the sewers, where I belong, of course, I thought about how I'd possibly defeat the various optional bosses horse only, and what the fuck I was getting myself into. Before retrieving Moke Shackle from the lobster infested gung, purchasing a stone sword key off a guy who lives off the southern edge of the continent, and using it to unlock an M statue in the Windham catacombs for the lightning scorpion charm. Before finally deciding, you know what? Let's finish what we started. But before that, let's rewind a bit. Alright, now let me paint you a picture. You enter Moog's boss arena for the first time, ready to try your hand at the Lord of Blood, horse only. At first you try closely circling the boss, hopefully that somehow the attacks fly right past you. And for a little bit, it seemed to be doing the trick, but you'd be wrong. Due to Moog's superior tracking, range, and moveset, coupled with the inability to either get away or horse frame your way out of an incoming attack, using this method proved to rely way too heavily on pure luck for anything to be consistent. So after a few tries, I realized this and instead tried circling just out of range of the boss. And to no one's surprise, with this minor change came a wave of possibilities. That being the potential to actually do something about the incoming attacks and not leaving everything up to chance. Now we're getting somewhere. Alright, time to rapid fire information. Forward thrust, outrun or iframe. Forward slam, outrun or iframe. Ground stab, that's usually a follow up. Bloody claws, get out quick. Otherwise, iframe. Don't worry, the follow up will usually miss you. Horizontal blood splash. Out space or iframe. Vertical blood splash. Lean to the side or iframe. Delayed double wide swing. Fuck that. Scripted Latin numeral attack. Try not to embarrass yourself. Blood rain. That's usually a good punish. This attack. Yeah, you're not getting out of this attack. And while doing all this, try to sneak in a few attacks, would you? With the only true safe opening being the blood rain, you're gonna have to take a few stabs in the dark with this one. All right, got all that juicy information fit into that lovely brain of yours. Good. Now forget all that. Because huh? now, using the power of the ancient dragon's lightning storm, we can... Because now, with the help of Moke Shackle, as you start the fight, you want to get in range, slap that bad boy on the floor, and prepare to give Moke the world's most harmful back massage. Doing so will often lead to Moke being relieved of stress, worry, and of course, 25% of his HP bar. Afterwards, this then forces Moak to stand in place doing one or more stretches, in which we can then use to activate the shackle a second time and suddenly, we're now in second phase. Now that reminds me about Nihil. Oh f- Say goodbye to a whole three chugs of G Fuel. Cause Mo's gonna be slipping all that up like taxes. I hope that doesn't bother you. Oh, and also, a word of advice. Make sure you got the right item equipped. As soon as second phase begins, boy you are in a whole nother level of hurt. Throw away whatever the fuck you learned in phase 1. Cause remember when I told you to stay barely out of range of his attacks? Well, increase that by threefold. Cause my guy, there is blood, and there is fire, everywhere. And it's all oozing from him. With this, you want to minimize as much time spent next to him as possible. As trying to horse frame in this fight is like suicide, and should really only be used as a last resort. Get in and get out. Don't linger. That's what you want to do. Otherwise, at the very least, he'll hurt your blood supply. And at most, you'll get skewered. But you're not the only one you should be worrying about. Cause at least you can take a few hits. Torn on the other hand, cannot. He's still as brittle and as frail as the moment you got him. By pairing this up with Torrent's larger hitboxes, this leaves him vulnerable to a multitude of random stray attacks, most deceptively long pokey stick, and of course, all the blood flame being scattered all over the floor. Thank God Torrent is immune to bleed. So in the end, it doesn't matter if you can take a few hits or not. If Torrent goes down, oftentimes, you will too. So to counteract this, I recommend having a handful of sweet resin ready at all times, so that when the time comes, make sure to feed him. Oh, and one last thing to worry about, if the HP damage does knock you off your horse, the poise damage still sure as hell can. But anyway, back to the boss. With his opening still being tight as hell, even with this hit and run strategy in mind, that only lowers the chances of you getting comboed into oblivion and can still catch you off guard regardless. From what I can tell, 
for each and every attack you want to land. You're going to have to get the timing and spacing just right. And oftentimes you still have to trade blows with the boss. Sometimes with you, most times with Torrent. But thankfully, there's at least one ace up our sleeve. That being Moog's tendency to exclusively power walk. Simply just make your way over to the other side of the arena from Moog, and voila! You now have a huge opening to completely heal yourself, Torrent, and get right back into action before Moog even makes it halfway. But anyway, this, this entire fight is just a fuckfest of RNG, patience, and flask management. It's its own type of madness, and it pains me just to describe it. So I won't bore you with the details any further. Oka? Yeah. Hit the music. In true Dark Souls fashion, after an hour and a half of bashing my head against a brick wall, I finally emerged victorious and it felt amazing. I stood against all the odds and I felt like I could take on the world. But with this feeling of blissful high came ignorance, as right after that nightmare, I somehow decided that it would be a good idea to go revisit the Haley Tree. You know, pay a visit to our local resident sleeping rat goddess. So yeah. As I raced through the entirety of EarthTreeWish.com, I felt a rush of both courage and dread coursing through me. And before I knew it, I had already arrived the faded boss room. Destiny called me as I entered. And as I watched the infamous cutscene play, I could feel a shiver down my spine. It was now the moment of truth. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. What the fuck? It's doable! Now that went surprisingly well, so I guess the counter to the hardest boss in the game just so happened to be a horse. Huh. But anyway, since we're on topic of slaughtering optional endgame bosses, let's just quickly make our way to Placidusi's place really quick, do some parkour, and whoa. Hold on, let me get a screenshot. And of course we gotta switch out to the Draconic set for this one. 
All right, let's do this. Entering this fight, I began to feel this peculiar sense of awe. The atmosphere seemed to pop out more and carried a greater sense of immersion. The fight seemed to flow so much more smoothly and the boss, ever so alive. Now this was odd, cause despite having fought this boss over countless times, this feeling never once seemed to cross my mind up until now. There was just something about racing across this mighty arena in the eye of the storm, going toe to toe with the mightiest of dragons and with nothing but your trusty steed. I've always found this arena to be criminally large for what it was for. Now don't get me wrong, it's a great arena, but I just couldn't help but feel a bit out of place. However, with Torrent now in the picture, the pieces seem to fit right into place as every aspect of this fight was elevated in some shape or form. Which brings me to my next point. During all this, Placid Dusi was as thick as always, but now instead of awkwardly beating at a blob of grey somewhere behind his rear, while circling this boss we actually get to fully observe and appreciate the full scale, design and magnitude of this fight, which to me was such a breath of fresh air. And as for the attacks, these also seem to operate similar to those of the overworld bosses, from the way things were telegraphed to the way they moved and could be avoided. So the point where it seemed as though it was on purpose. This often made dodging his AoE attacks feel more natural, having the iframe timings fit suspiciously well, and overall just feeling way less awkward to fight. So in conclusion, though this wasn't the hardest fight ever, or even hard at all for that matter, regardless I still had a blast fighting them this way. I never thought I'd say this, but this fight actually turned out to be way better on horseback and has led me to speculate that FromSoft had potentially intended this fight to include horse combat at some point in the past, but ultimately scrapped it since it would be too easy this way. But what do I know? Don't take my word for it, download the mod and see for yourself. But anyway, we finish off Draconius McThick with his own spell, and the bout that took place beyond space and time ends with ease, and with us as the victor. Now speaking of easy, next up was the first Elden Lord himself, and safe to say, with the experience gained from our previous encounter and now with a much larger arena to boot, phase 1 went by fairly quickly, with a few AoEs being minor inconveniences but nothing worth noting down. The same couldn't be said about phase 2 however, as it turned out to be even more easy. Like I don't even know if the grabs work, cause your boy legit could not reach me. I practically outspaced every single attack he threw at me and somewhat started to feel bad. But anyway, with that issue being swiftly taken care of, thinking that the worst was now behind me, I then proudly make my way towards the stock of the mighty Ur Tree, as I readied myself to take my rightful place as the next Elden Lord. One more boss, I thought. Soon this will all be over. W wait, is that Can Can by Offenbach I hear? Now why would that... Oh no. My god. Of all the demigods I'd faced throughout this run, I never would have guessed that Radagon, of all people, would be the one to stand above them all, being a true test of all that I have learned and suspending me to a screeching halt. This was, by a massive margin, the single most brutal, most difficult experience I've had in a while. 
Join me as I show you four reasons why and how I beat Elden Ring's final boss, Horse Only. Number one, damage. Firstly, the ungodly amount of damage that we had been doing earlier on in this playthrough had seemingly disappeared off the face of the earth. Don't get me wrong, our damage per hit is still really high, but being on horseback and often being able to only get one hit in at a time, stuff then really seems to fall off. Number two, the horse beater. Secondly, for some apparent reason, his moveset somehow just seemed to be designed to completely fuck over a torrent in all possible ways. Now hear me out, though oftentimes a lot of his melee swings can be avoided by just running backwards, oftentimes he also seems to pull shit out of his ass. And god forbid, make one wrong move and get hit at a slightly bad angle and you'll end up stun locked into submission. And after this, with Radagon's weapon of choice being a hammer with a fucking great rune attached to it, his moveset mainly includes downward slams, lower reaching swings, and sending shockwaves of holy energy along the ground. Now what does this mean? I'll tell you what this means. Mate, you ain't the target here. This scumbag's aiming for your fucking horse. Now remember what I said when Torrent goes bye bye. Good. And this is made even worse during the second phase, cause despite already being fully capable to murk the shit out of our trusty steed, your boy takes one step further and starts adding more AoEs, more shockwaves, and more bullshit. Also, who could forget? His fucking teleport. With most of his attack openings being right after his melee swings. In phase 1, we often just turn around and go in for an easy punish. But when phase 2 hits, expect to hit him much less. Cause that little turning motion you have to do, that'll cost you. Either punish in time or he'll reposition and reset his attack pattern. But all this being said, we still haven't even gotten to the worst thing he can do. Oh no no no. It's getting its very own dedicated segment. And that being... Number 3. Oh god, not the holy spear. But what if you tried staying further away from the boss, you might have asked. Well, you'd be greeted with this. This happened to be by far the single most brutal, most destructive attack your boy had to offer. No matter where you are, no matter how good your attempt is going, getting hit by one of these and your fate is practically sealed. What makes this attack so lethal isn't just its ability to dish out large bursts of damage, but also its insane levels of speed, range, tracking, and especially its ability to insta-kill Torrent. You heard me right, adding even more to his portfolio as a horse beater, if you get hit by this, 9 times out of 10, Torrent will cease to exist. Whether it be by HP damage or poise damage, you're gonna taste the floor either way. If the projectile doesn't do you in, it'll lock you in place and the AoE follow up will finish the job. And trust me, more than ever before, you do not want to be dismounted in the presence of this man. Radagon does not play nice. He is an asshole in the truest sense of the word. Never before have you ever seen a boss that would deliberately wait for the player to get up just to throw them back on the ground. And this is especially infuriating given how you have the rules in place that specifically prevent you from safety rolling. You also might think that this is just a coincidence. It's not. Your boy does this so dang often that if he happens to get to you before you can res torrent, 90% of the time, you won't be epic challenge runner press continue. Instead, you'll be his cousin. Press restart. But anyway, now that we've established the horrors that is Radagon's holy spears, let's go about how we can actively avoid them, shall we? A general rule of thumb is that they're usually used long range, but it's never uncommon for him to use at close range either. What if you tried iframing it, you might be asking. To put simply, if you were to do this, before you can remount torrent, the spear will detonate and you will immediately be knocked onto the floor anyway, making it pointless. But anyway, it took a bit, but after a while, I managed to identify two ways of avoiding these pokers of death. One is the circle right next to the boss, something that requires you to already be in a very specific location. But generally, you want to use the horse jump method. This includes you running to the side as the boss readies its attack and try timing the dismount at just the right moment for the projectile to narrowly miss you. Now this is no easy feat. As with the dismount windows being extra tight and positioning being crucial, this will take a bit of practice to pull off consistently. Too early and you'll get hit. Too late and you'll get hit. Pressing sprint at the wrong time and you're getting hit. 
heal at the wrong moment, you're getting hit. Be facing a slightly awkward angle, you're getting hit. You might think, hey, isn't this a bit too much? And I reassure you, with how outrageously frequent he uses this attack, you're gonna have to. Now with all this said, there's just one last thing we need to talk about. And so, that brings me to our final point. Number 4. Elden Beast. You didn't forget about this big guy, did you? Even after all that torment you had to go through, my boy, we are still not done yet. Because whether you like it or not, you still have one last dance with the Elden Beast. Now this fight in of itself wasn't too difficult to learn. But the fact that this always takes place right after the most difficult fight in the entire run makes even beginning to learn this fight an issue. Not to mention that oftentimes before you even get to this point, your healing reserves will be at critical lows from the constant bullying prior, making the margin of error razor thin. But let's get into the fight. Starting it off, the Elden Beast always does a scripted holy fire attack. This always leaves you with a convenient opening to either heal up or punish. And afterwards, the fight fully commences. With this, for the group of people who've always thought this fight should have included Torrent, I myself included, I can confirm that some parts of this fight certainly did feel natural. Like dodging these laser beams, avoiding the majority of his general attacks, actually being able to catch up with it, and finally having a counter to Elden Stars. But two attacks that seemed to catch me off guard the most was the first attack in his melee combo that had surprisingly large range, and his quadruple sword beams, with the latter being quite lethal and often being the one to finish me off. Now after all this, many hours had gone by, and as I struggled, I began to grow impatient, furious and desperate just to end it all. You could even hear it in my voice. <laughs> I forgot! No! No! I forgot to get off the fucking horse! It all seemed impossible. I even gave up at one point. Used miracles, Lord's Divine Fortification, Blessing of the Earth Tree, thinking that later I'd just come up with some lame excuse why I couldn't do it. But no! That is not enough! For what he has done, he will suffer and suffer by my hands! And so, throw away all the buffs. This run will end the same way we started it with nothing but torrent and a dream. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one last time for the Tree Sentinel!
Oh, baby, let's go. <laughs> Holy shit, I forgot about right card. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, this fight should not be done horse only. I suspect this to probably be even harder than Radagon. So you know what? I'm not gonna bother. This run turned out to be such an interesting new experience. Starting off being incredibly easy, and eventually ended off being insanely difficult. But anyway, down this mod, shit's really fun. I also want to give a special thanks to Orca and Corny from a Discord server, who made some of the music and the original sketch for my new avatar respectively. Have a great day, and oh yeah, there's one last thing I gotta show you.